Hi everyone, and welcome to Bluebeam Review. My name is Ari, and I'm a Bluebeam Certified Instructor with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about spaces and how we can use them to organize our documents. We can access all of our spaces by going to our Spaces tab on the right side. It's right here, and it looks like a few spaces put together. We can click on it, and here we have a list of all the different spaces in our floor plan, and this is the best way to locate them. The reason why I say this is because right now you can't see these two spaces. There is a way to see them a little bit more easily, and that's with the second button up here. It's called Highlight Spaces. So when I select it, two spaces just appeared. They happen to be right here and right down here. If I click on one of them, it highlights it, and it shows me some grips. And if I click on the other one, I basically made this space with dynamic fill, so I was able to fill in these curved areas quite easily. So we're going to make a plain space first, right next to this office in meeting 232, and then we'll use dynamic fill to make a space within copy 262 in order to see how easily we can create these spaces. Now, one more thing can be done. When you highlight spaces, a toggle also appears for editing spaces. If this toggle is turned off, then all the grips for spaces are basically gone and you cannot select a space. So if you want to be able to select a space, you have two options. You can use edit spaces and then just manually click on the space. The better way is just to basically have that turned off. And when you select a space, you'll notice that edit spaces immediately turns on by default. So you can just use the spaces list to locate your spaces much more easily than having to do it manually. Now, and the first button that we've skipped over is Add Space. Let's finally use it now that we understand how the other buttons work. So I'm going to click on Add Space. Notice that Edit Spaces turns itself off so that you don't accidentally select another space while you do this. So let's make a space right here. This is going to be a simple rectangular space. You can make a space essentially a polygonal shape by not holding the left mouse button when you click. So for example, if I click and let go, just like I did right now, I can make this space any shape that I want. And to close it off, I would just press Enter. Then it asks me to name this space. So I can call this test one, click OK. There's our space. And if I wanted to delete it, then I can click on it on the list and right click. And I have many different options here. We can essentially snapshot a space very easily. So spaces can be useful if we need to snapshot them repeatedly. So we can make a space first and then snapshot it that way instead of using the snapshot tool directly. That's a great thing to do. You can create an area measurement from a space, which is very, very useful. It is similar to the snapshot in which you can make an area measurement without a space. But if you have existing spaces, so you can start off on a drawing by making spaces, then you can just make area measurements out of it. And of course, we can delete the space right here, along with cutting it, copying it, and pasting it. And we can rename our space right here. And I'll show you how properties works very soon. Let's make a better space than this one to actually fill in this entire meeting room. So I'm going to delete this. Let's make it one more time. This time I'm going to click and hold my left mouse button and I'll make a nice rectangle. And let's go to the opposite corner. When our grip turns blue, we know that we've gotten the correct snap. If our grip is yellow, that means that we're on any random part of any of these vector lines. So I'm going to let go. Uh, I don't remember the name of this office, so I'm going to type in rename and I'm just going to click OK. Our space is ready. Let's zoom out. Ah, yes, it was meeting 232. So let's click on this, right click, rename it. We're going to call it meeting 232, press enter. Now let's edit the properties of this space. And how we do that is we don't go to properties. And that's why spaces is by default found if you're using the review advanced profile, found by going to review dropdown, profiles, and review advanced. I made a copy of that profile and modified it a bit further and named it my own initials. And what I can do is, is instead of going to properties, which basically has nothing there, and I do have the space currently selected. So even if I select spaces, properties itself doesn't work. So what I can do is, is I can right click on a space in the list or the space itself. And I have properties here. And this properties is different from this properties, the main properties of the program. And you'll notice that it's quite simple. What you can do is, is you could rename your space here. This is a long way of doing it. But if you're going to change a lot of spaces, you can do that very easily like this. Then you can change its color. And that just shows us uh, differentiating colors between spaces if we want to. So for example, this meeting here, 
could be considered something different, so we'll make it orange. And the opacity allows us to kind of see through the color itself. I like to set it to 20, 10 is the default. And then if I press escape, there is our space, and now we can tell the difference between them. Spaces can kind of look like markups, but you can tell that spaces are different because usually their opacities are much, much lower than a markup. So for example, if I mouse over this markup right here, these offices, if I click on this, then you could see that first of all, my mouse changed its cursor and that it basically has regular properties in the properties area. So this is an area measurement, while this, I can't even click on it because it's a space, and so I'd have to go to my Spaces tab and then allow it to be editable or just click on the name of the space right here. And now we can basically see how that works. So that's how we can modify our spaces in order to differentiate them from other spaces. Now that we've made a simple space, I believe it's time to make a bit more of a complex one. So let's use Dynamic Fill and let's make this space right here. Let's activate dynamic fill, and the fastest way to do it is right up here in this shortcut. And if you can't find it, you can go to the Tools dropdown, Measure, and it's the last option right here, or the J key. Let's press the J key. Dynamic fill's toolbar is now loading. Now it's ready to be used. Now, I've already covered dynamic fill in the past, but this could be another quick tutorial for you guys that haven't seen that before. So first, before I start filling in, I need to make a boundary in order to stop the fill at this doorway right here, because if I try to go past the door, it's gonna go through the gaps and into the rest of the drawing. So we're gonna create a boundary first. Let's start inside of this wall here. We wanna go on the innermost part of the wall, not on the outermost, but it doesn't really matter where exactly our boundary goes. We can be a little bit off and that is okay. Our boundaries do not have to be perfect as long as they are close enough and we can modify the grips that are part of any of the assets that we make, such as spaces, afterwards anyway. So I just made those two clicks. I just pressed enter. My boundary is ready to go. Now I'm going to use my fill. And if you want to see proper fill settings, I'll show them to you right now really quickly. There's a little bug that happens whenever you go into these settings from here. It says 100% right here, but it's not really the case. The slider is all the way down to the left. If I move it and then move it back, the actual percentage is at 25%. And that's the, slow, the smallest that we can make our boundary size. So I'm going to hide the settings now that you guys have seen them and you can mimic those if you want. And now I'm just going to click and hold inside move a little bit inside of the doorway, go back to the center, oops, and I forgot the closet. There we go. This solid line was stopping me, but luckily it just filled in in two seconds. All right, this fill looks really, really nice already. It looks like we don't have to do too much to fix it, but before we actually apply our fill, we have to create something from it. So now we get to the Create tab, and here is our spaces, and we have a drop down next to it, so let's click on that first. So we can immediately name, whoops, it keeps disappearing when you move your mouse away from it. There we go. It immediately gives us the option to rename the space on the fly. So if I just make the space without using this, it'll just be called space. And spaces can be named the same as other spaces. So you could do this and then rename them afterwards, but if you have spaces that are similar to each other, you could essentially have a template here. So this office is going to be called copy 250 so i could have the word copy on standby let's do it in all capital letters and this number here is our opacity just like we saw earlier and these settings if you notice are the same properties that we saw when we tried to edit the properties of another space so let's immediately set this to 20 i can use the arrows or i can type in here if i want to and i can click on the color picker here and i can choose any color that i want i think we'll leave it at this nice blue color and so now our space is customized and ready to be used. And if I was to use dynamic fill again, all subsequent spaces would be called copy just like this one. And then we can rename it afterwards with the right uh, room number, for example, which in this case is going to be 262. All right, our fill is ready, our border helped us get it. We're gonna make just a space out of this, nothing else. In my dynamic fill tutorial, I believe I make areas and volumes, for example, and basically they all function as they should. So I'm gonna click on apply right here. And there it is, our space has been created. And on our space list, it's called copy. So let's right click and rename that and change that. We're gonna call it copy 262, enter. 
Perfect. And let's see if we need to fix up this space. It looks like it was created perfectly. There are no extra grips near the doorway, which sometimes happens if the boundary is a bit too far and there's a gap between the boundary and this invisible line right here. So that's perfect. We've only got grips in our corners. Perfect, perfect. Here, it looks like it made the curve rather nicely. It's pretty close. There is a bit of an issue. It looks like we have a bit of a gap right here. So I'm going to take this grip. And I'm actually going to move it until it snaps right there. This is going to make it just a little bit more accurate. So whenever you use dynamic fill, make sure that you check and see if it's accurate enough. I can see that there are some gaps where there could be fill-ins. So for example, I can move all of these grips to fix that. But we're going to leave it as is because it's pretty darn close. We're only going to get maybe a fraction of a um, unit difference. So, all right, this is perfect. We now have our space ready to rumble. And so... What we can now do is, is we can right click on it and we can go to our space properties and we can make sure that all of our properties are fine. It looks like it picked up on all the properties from dynamic fill. So that was very successful. Let's right cl click on it one more time. And this time I'll just show you guys what it's like to create an area from a space. So we'll click on this and it's done immediately done. Now, in order to avoid seeing two different uh, objects on top of each other, an area and a space in this case, uh, firstly, before I continue, I'll close my dynamic fill toolbar. Um, I'm just going to uncheck highlight spaces in the list. There we go. All my spaces are hidden and there is my area. So if I didn't know that there was a space here, I would just say, oh, this area is here. And it's so easy to turn a space into an area just like that. And just a little small tip before we finish this tutorial, you can actually show volume information on an area. So I'm going to go to properties now because we can edit our areas in the main properties palette right here. And if we scroll down, we have show caption, and this is where the magic begins. So we can go to edit right here, and we have so many different options, including volume. And now it, what happened was that it says A equals instead of just the area. So if you have more than one criteria, it then starts to split them. But where's the volume? I don't see a volume here. And the answer is because by default, there is no depth set to this area. So we're just going to go to our measurements panel. We can see that our depth right here is set to zero and you're only going to see this if the markup is highlighted. So if I double, if I click outside of it, it is going to show very few options here in the measurements panel. So I can click on the area again. There's our depth. Let's make this six inches. So I need to make sure that our units are correct on the right side. And there we go. This is 83.7 something cubic feet. Excellent. And so that's how we can turn our areas into volumes as well. And this all started from a space. So a space is actually quite powerful, not an essential function in Bluebeam Review, but you can use them to organize different areas of the drawing. You can also use them to navigate to different areas of the drawing too. For example, what I could do now is you'll notice that if I mouse over any of my spaces, a little icon appears to the right of them. And this looks just like our hyperlink icon, which is found right up here. So how does this work? Let's pretend that we had a table of contents that perhaps listed all the names of the different offices and rooms and spaces. So copy 262 is right here. So I'm going to click on copy 262 and then I'm going to click on the hyperlink button. Now, essentially nothing happens and it seems like I've deselected the actual space because it's not highlighted anymore. But notice that the hyperlink has a blue square around it. So what does this mean? My cursor shows a plus sign symbol. So now I'm actually ready to make a brand new hyperlink. Now making it right next to the space is redundant because when you click on it, it's going to take you to the space. That's essentially what a hyperlink does. And so what could I do? I could go to another page of my document. I could go somewhere else on the document. So for example, let's pretend that in our legend that we make up here, that our office is actually in the legend. So I'm just gonna pretend that this is the correct one. So anytime someone clicks on the label for this office in the legend right here, they can basically see that there's a hyperlink and I can also right click on this and I can modify the hyperlink. For example, now I can go to properties, I can change its color, I can make it so that it's not visible, for example, so we can just toggle that off. And now, I've basically turned my legend, instead of just being a nice visual representation, into a little hyperlinked table of contents. So there I can just click on open office and boom, it takes you right there to whichever office you hyperlinked from. And so that's a really nice way to use spaces and hyperlinks in conjunction with one another. And in the spaces tab, basically hyperlinking is available and ready to be used. Thank you very much for watching our tutorial on spaces in Bluebeam Review. 
Once again, my name is Ari, and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.